Weekend Modder here with a quick video. I want to run through the process of doing the dashboard update. With the release of 17511, uh, many of my customers have never experienced a dashboard update in the time they've owned their console. We've been on 17502 for so very long that a lot of people ha have never had to update. So, First of all, check out the description down below in the video comments. I'm going to provide links to four different files. So I have crafted a version of JRunner here uh, using the files released uh, over on 7Sins for XE Build GUI and built out a JRunner version that has 17511 in it. Um, I'm also going to provide a link to an XE Build GUI. For those of you that are more comfortable in XE Build GUI or would rather use that for some reason, please feel free. I'm going to provide a link to the Dash Launch 3.18 files. And then finally, uh, and I'll explain why in a little while, I'm going to provide a link to a xenon.elf file. Uh, and that's going to be potentially useful for a very small number of customers who would be updating really old dashes. Um, so most people, no reason to download that. Uh, pretty much everybody in, in my recommendation should just grab the JRunner download, uh, especially if you've got a console from me, uh, because it's likely that you need that CR4 checkbox, and that's not present in the XE Build GUI version. So again, I suggest if you got the console from me, uh, do JRunner, uh, hit that download, get that going while you watch the rest of this video. So real straightforward, uh, on every console that I sold, or if you contact me, if I sold you my console and you or sold you your console, uh, or even modded it for you, and you provide me with a serial number, uh, either on your backup disk or what I provide to you would be a folder with, named with the serial number of your console with a number of files inside of it. And the files inside of that console are going to be your, primarily that we care about right now are your NANDUMP1, your NANDUMP2, and your UPD flash dot bin. Now the safest way to do this is to build from your UPD flash dot bin, especially if you're using XE build GUI, because it keeps the SMC consistent. Uh, with JRunner, as long as we select the right options, we can build from our NAND dump one or NAND dump two. What does that mean? So uh, here we've got JRunner loaded and open. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load source, and this is what I meant when I said build from. So if I go to desktop and I browse to this uh, folder that's named for the serial number, I can load up any of these bin or ECC files. I'm going to go ahead and load up my nanddump1.bin. That's my original retail stock NAND. And then my CPU key automatically populates through. If for some reason your CPU key did not pop through, uh, all you would need to do is pop into uh, the, those files again. There's a CPU key.txt, and you just grab uh, the contents of that CPU key.txt, this bit, you could just copy it and then paste it over into JRunner because that is this same number here. So you just highlight and paste and sure enough, look at that, it's the same thing. So now that we've got a source NAND loaded, we want to make sure in our dash version drop down we have 17511 selected. And again, that's available pre-baked into the version of JRunner in my download. Again, check the description for a link. Uh, this particular console that I'm updating uh, was a Trinity done with the CR4 speedup file. So I'm going to select Glitch 2 and check the CR4 box. If you're not sure and I did your console, go back to your video and watch the first 20 seconds of it. If I say we modded your console using an Ace V3 and I don't mention the CR4 speedup files, then you use just the Glitch 2. If I say we, we modded your console using the Ace V3 and CR4 speedup, then you do want to check that CR4 box. So that's our three ingredients. Source NAND, so the original file we're building based off of, CPU key, and then glitch or, or modification type. And from here, all we need to do is create XE build image. Uh, now you may get prompted with something like this, SMC found, delete it, and it actually gives you really good advice here. Unless you put it there, delete it. So the question is, delete it, question mark, Yes, delete it, because it says, unless you put it there, delete it. And I didn't put it there, so I should delete it. So we, there we go, say delete it. We said yes. And then night in this little output window here, we get this nice output. And at the final end of the day, initializing UPD flash.bin. Now, in our source, you can also notice that the UPD flash.bin file is right there. Um, 
At this point, we can hit our Show Working Folder button. That's going to open up a folder containing the file. You can also look at the timestamp right here. Local time for me is 7.57, and that's the current time on this uh, uh, file. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is insert a USB drive into uh, my computer now. So this USB drive is going to show up as TWM, as the device name. So here it is right here, TWM. You can see it. So what I'm going to do is just copy that updflash.bin file we just created. I'm going to click into my uh, USB and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that um, updflash.bin onto the root of my thumb drive. Now the one other thing that I'll caution you here is the TWM uh, USB drive was already pre-formatted to FAT32. Just to prove to you I'm going to do a right click and properties and you can see the file system FAT32 so you want to make sure that that is FAT32 uh, before you go through this process otherwise it will not work. So now that the updflash.bin file is on that I'll go ahead and just right click on it and select eject so eject pops me right out uh, so now I'm gonna physically remove the USB drive from my computer I'm gonna physically again plug it into the front of the Xbox 360 that's in front of me and I'm gonna power it on using the eject button so by powering on using the eject button I cause the console to boot into Zelle and this one's actually really nice and fast booting so it's gonna happen super quick here um, is we're already booting up into Zelle what you're gonna notice is that once Zelle gets completely booted up here at the very end it's gonna say that it found the updflash.bin and it's going to tell me if I don't want to write that then I should shut down. Well, that's what, what it's saying to me is I found a file that's got the right name on it and I'm going to write it to my NAND and if you see that and you didn't mean for it to happen you should turn off but we're doing this intentionally so at the bottom when it says found the file I'm just going to wait so here it is found updflash.bin press power now if you don't want to flash the NAND I do want to flash the NAND, so I'm just going to wait right here. And what should happen in a few seconds is that it's going to give me a uh, checking NAND file, and then uh, it'll say pass the check, and it'll actually begin to write that file out to the NAND. Now, in some cases with this particular thumb drive, I've had a, a, a problem where it will hang at this checking NAND file, and I'll just need to power off the console and power Zell back on one more time. So uh, it looks like this might be another one of those scenarios. So I'm going to do just that. I'm just going to press the main power button on the front of the console. It's going to cut off here. So I think you guys are just left with the screen hanging uh, on, the, on the video feed here. And then I'm going to hit the eject button now that it's off. So I just powered the console back on. And in a few moments when it gets a successful, actually instant boot again. So here in just a second the screen should refresh and you should see Zell starting up all over again. There we go. So this is the second boot of Zell, only because it hung up there. Uh, I would never reboot it if it was in the middle of flashing with the little scrolling numbers, uh, but because it never got to that part, I was safe to power off and uh, turn Zell back on again by pressing the eject button to boot. So here we go, powering through all the different little things that it does on checkup. There it's found my UPD flash again, great. And then uh, Hopefully we'll get through the check this time without any hang up and it'll jump straight to flashing like it's supposed to. There we go. So see how that time it checked and it like instantly and now that little number is scrolling. Now it's going to go all the way to 3FF which is the 16 megabyte uh, NAND file image written out. Um, and when it does complete it will give us a, a notice on screen it will say like image written power off now that's your sign that it's safe to go ahead and power off your console so uh, we're approaching that area again we're gonna hit 3 and then it's go, go to through 100 and then go through A, B, C, D, E, F and then hit F, F so uh, that's the hexadecimal counting system I believe alright so there's 3 and now A, and then again it's going to get to F. 
So there we go. Image written, shut down now. So what I'm doing is physically pressing the power button on the front of the Xbox. I'm going to remove that USB drive. And then I'm also actually going to unplug the power from the rear socket on the console for about two count. And then I'm going to plug it back in. Now I'm pressing the power button, not the eject button, the normal regular power button on the front of the console to boot it up normally. And when the console boots this time, uh, what we should notice is that we've uh, booted into a 17511-image. So there we go, that, that took a slight delay on the boot, it just was successful just now. So we can see that starting up, let me just readjust the image here. There we go. So this one was already configured previously. Um, so I've, it's already got the avatar update because I did this one earlier. Um, but if we check over to the settings and go to system info, what we just flashed was a 17511 image. And uh, just by way of proof here, I'm going to go over to the games tab and show you that it does have XEX menu and that I can still launch it. Uh, which is, thereby proves that it's still a RGH, you know, that it's still able to run unsigned code. Because if it wasn't, there's no way you'd be able to run uh, XEX menu. So there it is. That's the quick and dirty way, and e well, not dirty, quick and easy way to do your Xbox 360. One quick caveat, if you have a Corona 4 gigabyte console, this method will not work for you you will need to use a simple NAND flasher via the dashboard. I've got another video that was older in my channel that I will link to in the description below. Check that out. Uh, thanks, and I uh, hope everybody has fun.